afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane, Master of Propaganda, Hero Strike, Defender of the Fatherland. We're off here to a one versus one on the glaze between the South. We've got Poker Picks fighting here for the Orbital Command West for Germany, Deutschland. And the third Panzer Division versus in the North, we've got CPU Easy fighting here for the Soviet Union. For the glory of Comrade Stalin. And the 17th mechanized core we got here spec ops breakthrough and scavenge versus counter-attack partisan and got motor coordination tactics infantry bulletins here with partisan sniper and shock to a bulletins here for cpu easy so he's actually sort of pointing in all sorts of directions with the bulletins giving no clear indication as to what he could be playing for we got focus here following up for pocket picks as he's heading westwards and eastwards so he's going for a very broad approach he's trying to grab as much as map as he can we got here what looks like a delayed special rifle command start here for CPU easy first doubling units conscripts putting up a bit more initial presence and then sort of following up with the special rifle command that could also potentially throw off pocket picks a bit Lolomita falls the sense of security before then heading in with the penal troopers so that could work out rather interesting here depending on how CPU plays and of course how pocket picks react Western fuel pond there's being secured, Sturm is moving on east, might actually try and push straight for the fuel pond there with the Sturm pond here, and that way disrupting CPU easy's early game, but it's first going for the victory point here, I will probably just go on straight for the fuel pond to be honest, hit it, you know, disrupt your opponent there, victory points in that regard, less important than just, you know, disrupting your opponent's fuel flow and overall, you know, pushing him back, also forcing him to react towards here, towards these more rapidly, so... Uh, well, we got more forces in the west. Now two squads operating with the sides of each other. Third forces on the way there. We got the penal troopers for CPU EC. And there goes now going for the fuel point. Again, I think could have disrupted a bit there. But instead, CPUs will be getting a bit of fuel now. We'll of course have to see how further reacts. Sam is being laid down. We got engineers being about. Shots fired. Third force squad riding moving towards east to support the storm pioneers. And the penal troopers are yet to arrive. Samex being laid down there, almost finished. Falsk is quick, move up a bit further. Can't just move towards here. We got Porker Picks a bit or extended versus CPU EC. Porker Picks, by the way, also previously being known as Jeremy. Bit of trick when some players keep shifting names compared to others. Point there being secured. Falsk is moving up, and then Guinea's pulling back inside the church. Well, at least no, looks like it almost. Almost got the few point there. You could consider laying down some mines around here, would be a good spot to do so. Folks, they're going to engage by the engineers. Most of the guns versus car 98 Ks, and he's quickly falling back to the house. He could have run for the house and disrupted and denied it to the opponent. Instead, he just apparently ignores it. Cut off on there, being engaged by conscripts. Good work there, by the way, by the CPU. He's realizing most of his forces at the sides of the map. Nothing protected in the center. He goes straight for the car point, straight for the jugular. Folks, they're being lined up before making for a big push together. Not a bad idea of roll. No mines there. Again, I do feel he could have laid down some mines there to again make it harder for him to get back. The fuel point, folks, was there. Both players harassing such each other. Like going to be a battle group headquarters here for Porky Picks. And there you go. Fultz is charging the conscript there, just relying on brute force. Though he might want to stop up. And there you go. Now just moves on the other side of the cover there. So he has to move up to engage there. Truck moving in. He's going to use the truck there to push around the conscripts. Bit of an older cheese menu. And there you go. Realizing what's coming his way, he just immediately retreats. Still on Pioneer something about or something. I'm not entirely sure what uh, Porker Picks is doing there, but there you go. Pops into the house. Fultz is falling a bit back. Not sure what he's intending to do with them there, to be honest. So that one seems like a bit of an odd maneuver. That might have been a misclick or something. Seems more likely. And he's grabbing the Western victory point. Fultz is moving towards the centre. And truck there will likely be setting up soon for the Battle Group headquarters. So I think a mechanised regiment containing the fuel advantage he does have as an opponent and the likes there could be quite effective. Plus, I mean, now he knows there's penal troops about there, in which case, again, the looks ill-go. It's going to be quite helpful. But no, he very much sticks to the Battle Group headquarters there. Porker picks very much in favour of the meta in that regard. Unyielding. You need there being pushed back. We got m 3 one one up here for CPU He's saying a bit of sort of uh, motorization there to his men. Some firepower on the move. Got Sturm Panzer counter against the engineers there. Pushing them back, defending the fuel point and denying it to his opponent. Pion troops then gaining the full gun ideas. Bit hard to say how this one will go and work. Oh, they are low on health on the Pion troops are in the house. Plus, they got more or less full view here. And I don't think the Falsk is actually fully covered here by the cover. So that's probably going to be their win there for CPU East's Strafniki. I mean, obviously, with this many penal troops here, he should definitely consider machine guns to help suppress them down the road. I mean, that's going to be, I think, a very good choice there for Porker Picks. I mean, in theory, he could also aim for the flat craft here again. Fuel has been delayed, so that is an option. Although we got the uh, 
Field medics on the way there. Scout coming up to support the advanced penal troopers there. Pulling back towards here for reinforcement. A Kedmev on the way to help deal with the scout car. We got Flame Force there on the Strafniki. But we can see that CPU has managed to turn around here in the early game against Porker Picks, partly due to the penal troopers, but also partly due to, again, you know, Porker Picks not really doing much to hold any ground. Again, there's been no mines, for example, laid down to stall up his opponent. And he's not really set himself up, you know, for a second round at getting back into the game with, say, a mechanized regiment into a look. So, in that regard, uh, he's a bit sort of hanging back here. Now we can sort of see him he's been healing up there, but, you know, he might want to get into heavy cover. And still, you know, fire back at the Russians. Up here, we've got Guinea's being pushed back by full squad ideas. He's just waiting. He's trying, I think, to draw in uh, CPU easy here into the Hornet's Nest. You got a kid there for them. There goes advancing the penalty. Now he needs to shoot back there. There we go, counter-attacking as soon as the fields are there reveal themselves. He also rushes for the scout, come... I don't think he's going to be able to... Oh, he's within the range actually to Pantherfuss there. Pretty good job there, half health, Fultz coming in, they could knock it out with the second Pantherfuss. Fields are being rushed by Fultz, and the Sturm Pioneers. Second Pantherfuss there from Jürgen. And gets the scout car, there you go, Pilms was pushed back as well. Okay, now for moving out, but now it doesn't really need it again. MD-34 here would be a lot more useful versus all of these penal troopers and Russian infantry for pocket picks. Again, it would allow him to, you know, establish some sense of control and make it harder for CPU to just sort of swing them about on the battlefield the way he wants to. Mines moves up here. Very sensible choice there. Not underestimating his opponent's ability to lay down mines, though so far I don't think CPU has laid down any. Oh, wait, there's a damage charge there, though. Salvaging the scout as well for fuel. Good work there. Fultz then engaged by the Strafniki. Points in the south being grabbed. I mean, considering the way Porker picks so far as playing breakthrough drops would be a good choice there. The breakthrough tactics then will allow him to rapidly decap a lot of points there. Plus, Panzer for Slears, Sturm Officer there could also work out nicely for him. Sturm Pioneers for his engineers. Quick putting away that Minesweeper. Yeah, Otto, we don't need some Minesweeper. We just need to go with this assault rifle to shoot for Dam to Russen. Troops are healing, reinforcing people troops going there for the point. Again, the Fultzkers should be able to rapidly counterattack and push them back. A lot of fire there across once more. And in the east overall making good progress. CPU easy going for more penal troops here, preparing for the next assault. Penal troops have suddenly become extremely popular as so late as more and more people realize the power of them. I'm actually seeing less and less uh, maximum spam at all, and overall maximum play. And conscripts certainly have to an extent been phased out in favor of just the penal troopers because if you could just dominate well enough for the penal troops, you could just follow up with other troops to deal with any light vehicles. But then Relic have also acknowledged in, you know, one of their recent sort of bits for feedback that they are aware that penal troopers are overperforming. So some kind of nerf should likely be expected for them. Obviously, the bigger question is what kind of nerf we will see for them. Though probably some kind of slight DPS nerf, more trying to bring down the profile to be less impressive at certain ranges possibly, or just making them easier to kill. I mean, that could also work out. But we've got more Sturm Pioneers than the picks. Good to see that. He's gone for Scavenge, Scavenge Doctrine. That's only one a bit popular there again. That's pretty much the meta choice. Do not see this always the right choice here. We'll of course have to see how it works out there for Porker Picks. Going Porks again. Still, mine here would be good. Would be really good. Demo charge again. Looks like CPU is not relying on mines at all, at least so far. Second Sturm Pioneer squad out. They're getting the patch check because he's worried about enemy vehicles. Not bad. Not bad. And certainly Sturm Pioneers with the Panther Treks are certainly catching on as well there in the meta game, though. There is the State of the Balance video, which is, should also be going up today, so you could of course get further details there. Fultz they're being pushed back by the conscripts. Fultz are there moving towards the west again. MD-34 really would do a lot there for Porker Pick. Sturm Pioneers with the Penal Troopers. Scout or oh, truck moving up there. He'll probably use it to set up the Schwerer Panzer headquarters, so that way you know maintain a stronger presence, maybe defend his fuel point or something like that, which he needs to do really about now. Problem is most of his forces are elsewhere, so he can't actually successfully defend it. And the lack of mines for some sort of hooks on his more exterior points, there's not really helping either. Constant being pushed back. A lot of German rifle fire. Sturm Pioneers that could do a bit of reinforcements to get the most out of what they got. Then there goes Sturm Pioneers being swarmed here by Russians in the semi tank. In fact, find themselves quickly interred. Kansk is covering the retreat path as well. Very sharp move there by CPU ECM. And we got Jaegers out here for Porker Picks. For you know, manpower. Moving in to support here the third Panzer Division from the 100th Jaeger Division. Fultz is moving westwards. 
Jaeger's by the way weren't really reconnaissance troops, they were sort of just light infantry which meant they didn't have a lot of support weapons like you know heavy artillery and the likes so were sort of meant to be sort of faster and sort of be used on more uneven terrain, those sort of you know the in-between between grenadiers and you know Kibirks Jaeger and the likes there, not quite mountain operations but still you know heavy in uh, Italy and otherwise you know not quite so east and about terrain. They're also in a sense assault troops if you look at some of the uh, tables of organization, some bits there have them showing as being heavily equipped with submachine guns quite interestingly enough so there seems also some assault element going in with the Jaegers this one is like infantry recon seems a bit odd now, obviously Jaegers would also have their own reconnaissance units obviously but there you go troops being pushed back got the T-70 rolling out here he does have the Pantrajek he does have like head and effer so he's not going to be too vulnerable here to the T-70 he's like going to be set up the spare punch quarters to defend the fuel point I still think the lack of mines is a bit of a mistake there by Porky Pix. It missed opportunity against CPU Easy and the 17th mechanized core. Grenade assault there. Just chucking grenades at the cafe. Just showering it in explosives. And there you go. It ultimately collapses under such the sheer force of it. Demo charge there as well. CPU is really a fan of demo charges. This one though, I mean, you can take out the house in theory to deal with this, but the problem is it's going to be a bit harder to keep track of some of the things here. T7 moving up, but Raken with his rates support. Misses though. Less good, less good. Yeah, you need to be careful here. There's a T70 nearby. And here, troops reinforcing. I'm surprised he hasn't gone for a fort retreat point here. We got a second Jaeger squad here, this time hitting the eastern victory point. Puts them to fire from the penal troopers and up north here. Jaeger's being pushed back by the T-70 light tank. Need to be careful. With a bit of bad luck, that could be a full watt. Then particular penal troopers moving up should have uh, cut off the retreat path as well. Plus, there's the one in the house as well. Here. I mean, these Jaegers are in for a really bad day. I mean, overall, not so, I think, good work there by Porker Picks. Again, you should be more careful there with the retreat path. Pantherfast on the T-70 and looks like the Jaegers did survive, though it was quite expensive even when you retreat them, like almost full health against all of this, that's not going to work out so well there, so in that regard I would say he's in fact got a bit lucky. Almost got the T-70 like Kedneff, he's close to losing it though, Fox goes to Jumpers doing with the can to keep the flank clear, and T-70 dodges it, he just gets, you know, missed. Troops down here reinforcing, Stafniki there gaining Vention G2, quick incendio grenade hit, could do a good job, I think flushing them out, like Kedneff cleared out. Spare Panzer quarters is up. I think some orbs are done here with light machine guns would be a really good choice, in particular with all the penal troopers. I mean, the orbs on the light machine gun would be able to outrange them and sort of just bleed them out there very quickly. I just sort of feel like more too many orbital commanders players are neglecting orbs are done as well as you know being an actual factor. But oh well, CPU is probably floating a thousand manpower definitely needs to stop doing that. Could consider fuel caches if necessary. But definitely not floating a thousand manpower. That's generally not good. Troops are reinforcing. Storm Pioneer setting out, others getting healed. Fox is Yading leading the way here. Such a charge there. Nasty work. Didn't quite get like Kevin, if that thing's been made out of sturdier stuff. Here we go, another engagement. Jaegers versus Penal Troops. Quick grenade assault here, except he does not have the uh, quite. Oh, there we go. Penal Troops are moving up against the Jaegers. Bit of movement there. Getting a kill there. Sergei pops dead. Down to half health. There you go. Another kill. Down to three men. Two. And we got a satchel charge here. The Jaegers. Oh, he's not paying attention. Oh, wiped. That was definitely not good there for pocket picks. Not good. Certainly not good for the German army either. You can hear sound at five from the Jaegers out in the open. Shots fired. Losses incurred. The Ken Mephis setting up. And there we go. T76 said, okay. Oh dear, he's rushing ahead. He's going to lose it. He failed to pop crew repairs. And the T70 goes down in a shower of flames and explosions. Bits and pieces. So that's definitely a bit of a victory there for Porker Picks. I still think he should be getting some orbs on. He's actually going for a third Storm Pioneer squad. Now that one is rare. And certainly also offers him a lot of firepower. So, I mean, that could also work out, just rare to see. But I still think, you know, first some orbs done would have been a good choice. I mean, he's gone for the spare punted quarters, yet he's yet to utilize it. Grenade assault here again from the full kind of these, got penalties moving ahead. 
And I also think an MD-34 would still be a great choice. I'm surprised that so many Opel Command Rose players just neglecting an MD-34 against units like Penal Troopers. Again, well set up, you can stall them and suppress them, which is rather what you want. Sturm charging into the Sturm Pioneers and the Jaegers. Loss is being inflicted. There you go, quickly taking some losses there. The Sturm Pioneers need to retreat ultimately since they're still outgunned here by the Jaegers. Oh, not the Jaegers, but the Strafniki. Eastern victory point secured, getting the point here as well. A lot of troops rushing back and forth. I'm still surprised he hasn't tried to set up a fort retreat point. CPU is still floating, way too much manpower, you silly tosser. And there you go. Goes for tech up, goes for guardsmen. Goes for heavy mortar, got mortar again. It's pretty much just a standard two doctrines there. Well, at least the most meta doctrines versus each other there. Got mortar versus scavenge. Still upon his ground, needs a munitions point here. Points being grabbed, needs to go up for the fuel point there as well. And again, he's still exerting good map control. The problem is, he's just not quite as good at sort of getting some serious kills in or stalling the penal troops. Of course, again, he's lacking machine guns or orbs will die. And for that matter, he's not laying. Oh, he's finally laying down mines. Just took him 16 minutes to do so. Going for the fuel again. I mean, it's certainly going to stall CPU issues from taking up. And again, you know, he failed to use the f manpower surplus to build up some fuel cash to at least sort of offset that, at least slightly. Troops are healing reinforcing. Still no Orbital Darden. I mean, including the call in the Osprey right now, that actually be pretty effective since currently CPU has only got a single guard squad to then really stall all of it. So, I mean, that could work out, though. I'd probably recommend a Panther 4 with that, or maybe, you know, aiming for a Panther, because we can go for a Panther first. I mean, that would definitely sort of establish some kind of aggressive field presence and force CPU to sort of focus more on countering that. And also be more careful. In particular, then support from the Orbital, in which case, sort of got a pretty sort of potent combo. But grenades taken to Storm Pioneers, it's half the unit down, forced to retreat. Jaeger sticking with the can there, closing in the veterans to one. Need to cover around that heavy mortar, though. Shift, shift. Ah, uh, grenade assault there against advancing engineers. And a full wipe there on the Jaegers. Grenade assault there against the guardsmen. He loves his grenade assaults. But he does need to get more careful about his positioning his units. He can go for the Panther 4 now here, Porker Picks. There again. Panther, I think, would also be a pretty good choice. We don't have much of the, the impact there of the uh, Panther. There goes, going for the Panther 4. And certainly, if you can get another Panther check up the Sturm Ponies. I mean, two Sturm Ponies scores with Panther checks upon the Panther 4. Because still be, I think, pretty sort of potent tactical formation. Mine got set off there, <laughs> killing several penal troopers. CPU so is nicely pushing back here against Porter. Porker Picks and gaining control of the map once more. Since again, Porker Picks is lagging, the means to really stall him. And the Hay Mortar is only making it worse there. Of course, the Panther 4 should give him some nice ability to swing back against CPU EC, even against the T 34. In particular, he remembers to upgrade the other Stream Pioneer Squad with the Panther Shakes as well. I mean, double Panther Shakes like Kaden Effer plus a Panther 4 means that T 34 from 6 is going to have a bad day. Mines down there from uh, CPU EC and the 17th Mechanized Corps. And we got Mites who's out there. Looks like he spotted him laying down the mine. Vetri 2 they gain for the Mites for the unit. A lot of sort of there against in years. Almost got it. But not quite. Fox is moving up here, taking heavy mortar fire in. And there we go, we got the Panther 4. But he's not going up to support his infantry. Instead, he's swinging up far away from his troops there. That's definitely not a good move. Got grenades all there, wiping out the engineers. Going after the Pion troops, they're going for maybe a wipe here. Fulton versus the Pion troops out in the open, intending to get it off, but his troops are taking a punishing casualties here. We got the Stuart T 54, they engage the Stuart Pioneers, forcing them to retreat. Ultimately, the Pion troops get away. Oh, it just feels like a weird choice there to not support his infantry with his Panzer IV, rather just sending off the Panzer IV there on its own. I mean, in theory, he could end up with a damaged engine, in which case he's been isolated from the rest of his forces, which would have been pretty bad. So that was definitely not a very central move there by Porky Picks, a.k.a. Jeremy. The you know, under fire there from the Shrap Hunted Quarters. Hey, Mortimer, yeah, that's clearly a misclick, I think, there by CPUEC, or a bad idea. Panzer IV there, could time up support. And I'm still surprised he's not set up a fort retreat point here. I think it would give Porker Picks a bit more ability to move about on the battlefield here quicker. And it's time here for the mid game analysis in terms of damage. Porker Picks is hit, kills wise though. They're pretty close to each other. And against the rations again, that's usually where an Orbital Combat West player should be a bit, you know, 
upgrade. I mean, it is penal troops, and obviously, again, they are slightly overperforming. But even then, you know, their methods to offset that. And again, one of them is called the MG 34s. I mean, really, Porker Picks is not doing himself particularly a lot of favors right now. I mean, he needs to change his tactical approach and slightly his strategy as well that will deal with this. In terms of army value, though, I mean, he's ahead there. He's, again, he's got the tank, the big one. He's got Sturm Pioneers, Volkswagen. He's got more veterans. I mean, it's not all bad, but uh, he needs to, again, change the approach here. Resource float-wise, again, huge float there. Again, very not clever there by CPUs, but again, he's quickly sorting that out. And in terms of points held, it's been a bit back and forth here, but there will CPUs in more control again, simply due to the sheer dominance of the penal troopers. Again, this year, lack of any suppressor weapons from Porker Picks with which to deal with this. Again, the lack of machine guns is not helping him out, and I'm not really sure why the idea of using a machine gun to suppress the penal troopers is beyond him or apparently distasteful to him. So again, get on an MD-34, in fact, get out two so they can sort of just work together that way, and, you know, begin suppressing the bastards. Failing that, get a flat calf tank, or maybe use an Osman. Obviously, he can't suppress, but can at least do some damage. But, you know, get some of that to sort of severely put the pressure on. On the penal troopers, Porker Picks. Don't just, you know, mess about like that. And also, get some orbs loading out with light machine guns. Again, they're also sort of a nice method of keeping them a bit in check. So in that regard, again, Porker Picks needs to, you know, tighten up a bit, you know, get a bit more together. I mean, obviously, he's got some nice moves, but the problem is, again, he's just failing to take any direct meshes towards dealing with the penal troopers. And that's usually... What's called a bad idea when you're ignoring sort of the main part of your opponent's force and not trying to counter it. And again, machine guns, you got them. Use them, Porker Picks. Use them. As for CPUE, so there's not so much to say. I mean, he's keeping that pressure. He should be worried about machine guns, but so far, again, he's not worried about it because Porker Picks is. And again, most Obel Commander players at the moment has seemed to, you know, for some reason, failed to consider it as a counter to heavy penal trooper play and thusly aren't getting it, which of course means so it plays with the. Penal troopers have a lot more of free time. So, I mean, really, again, there's not much to say. I mean, he's just taking advantage of the current big flaw in Orbital Command vs. Meta game, which is, for some reason, machine guns aren't cool. And, of course, CPUs, of course, like the, you know, averagely intelligent man that is, that he's not a complete idiot, assumes, you know, that's a good thing to exploit. And it is. I mean, it very much is. I mean, nothing against him for, you know, pushing in against this huge, huge, vast cataclysmic gap that currently exists in the Orbital Command Best Meta game, which is, you know, no suppressor weapons. Again, this is pretty much what this is. He just needs to get more tanks, lay down some mines, and let's keep up the pressure, in which case, again, on this pocket picks, severely changes his tactical and strategic approach, will lose. I mean, again, if he does change it up, they get some suppressors, weapons, all of a sudden CPUs will falter a lot more. In particular, they make good use of the Panzer Force and keeps supported with the Sturm Pioneers, again, in which case he's got a strong tactical battle group that can do a lot of damage to CPU easy, but again, it very much requires him to actively begin actively seeking out dealing with the penal troops in ways that are beneficial to him, and which includes getting some machine guns out. So let's return to the fight and see what actually happens here. Ready. Also, fault sheet point here really would do nothing good. Panther force should get a machine gun, he's going to think straight for the mortar, not a bad idea. If he can kill that, that will obviously you know, do some, him some favors. But no, he said, ignores it. I think even when he can see it, Garthman under fire. We got Fulton goes moving eastwards. No assault rifles, by the way, for them. I mean, that's also something that would at least help slightly versus the penal tool. But it's not something apparently Paul is considering. Partly because he's wasting too much munitions and assault grenades, which is not something you should be throwing willy nilly over assault rifles. Mark vehicle there in the Panther 4, which pretty much neutralizes it since Pocket Picks is not keen on using it until the uh, Sturmovic has been shot down. Sturm is heading towards the center there. Panther 4 needs to support them, work together. Remember, tactical formation. The camera for the ground, the Western Victory Point. We actually get a nice lead there for CPUs over Pocket Picks at the moment. Really, again, should go for some orbital down there, Jeremy. Penal troops there pushing back the full scan ideas. Panther forming in towards the center. I don't know why he slowed down there instead of just pushing forwards. Demo charge spot. It needs to deal with that. There we go. Even a flare mine down there as well. 
CPU is there being feral. We got more mines down there. Roll his gang rage to really defend the territory here. Stern Pioneer is reinforcing, healing. Panther 4 getting a machine gun there finally. He's also finally going for Orbis of Darden. Oh, he cancels them. That was a bad idea, I think. He definitely should have gone for them. Panther 4 then engaging penal troopers. Pun has been pushed back. Penal troops on the fire there from the Fox because Panzer were going backwards. Again, he's just sort of dilly dallying about with his Panzer 4. He's not really playing very efficiently with it at the moment. Thus, he's not really leveraging its strengths against CPUs and doing as much damage as he could have. Which is really what he should be aiming for since he actually went for it. Otherwise, he might as well have gone for an Osman much, much sooner. In fact, going for an Osman right now would not necessarily be a bad idea. Otherwise, I think he should be aiming for a Panther. I don't. I mean, he could go for another Panther one again, but the way he's just used the current one, I'm not really sure a second Panther is going to result in that much better for him. Plus, again, a Panther will very much lock down CPUs from getting too much armor there, and the Osman just allowed to punish the infantry harder right now. I mean, he needs to make a decision there. Bit of movement here. This is where he's actually used a grenade assault, but doing set into retreating. And he's still not upgraded a single folks can be squad with a sword bombs whatsoever. Patrick's there versus the uh, T 3476, almost taking down to half health. Panther 4 moving out again. Conscript's guard moving ahead, like Kevin setting up. Mortar fire raining down. We've got penal troops then the flank being dealt with slightly, or at least attempted to. Still on punch retreating. Panther 4 just ends up not moving in anyways. Still flooding manpower. He's going for another Panther 4 at this point. Looks like it. Well, in which case, again, go for some Orbital Garden, you know. Bring up some more serious infantry. At least he's finally upgrading his. Uh, of was there with assault rifles. That's something. Only took him almost, you know, 25 minutes. Damage into the Panther 4. He needs to get some supporting infantry there. But again, the lack of foot cheek point. Oh, he's finally going for it, by the way, as well. Only took him, you know. Again, almost 25 minutes. Oh, of course, he needs to remember to activate it. That's your treat point. Moving up here. We need assault there. Lands not too well. I need to retreat the folks gonna do this. T-5045 on the way there for CPU EC. Porker picks just again floating, not going for Orbison while he's waiting for the Panther 4. Maybe additional Storm Pioneers, or maybe some MG-34s. I mean, there's really so many things that Porker picks could be doing, but again, there seems to be this kind of malaise. But he's not entirely sure what to do. Folks are there versus Penal Troopers. At least he's quick getting the Panther 4 fixed up, which is something. And with two Panther 4s again, he will have some firepower. The promise is going to be a T-3045 out there, supported by T-3476. So it might not quite be as advantageous there for Porker picks anymore. <coughs> Going up then to engage the penal troopers, pushing them back there with the Panther 4. Stuart Pine is rolling up here, supporting the Panther 4. That's a good move. As long as he doesn't move the Panther 4 too far ahead of the rest of the force. Porker picks. Keep them together. At least go for the mortar and then just quickly roll back or something. Instead, he ignores the mortar, shoots at something else instead. Second Panther Fall, they're arriving for Porker Picks and the third Panzer Division. Attacks moving in there, exposing the rear to where the enemy's likely to come from. Not the best move there. Patrick's there, getting a good hit on the T 35 Panther Fall lands as well, like Kenneth, they're setting up. Could get a Panther Fast hit up. There we go. Veterans 1 on the Panther 4, the Panther Fall moving in. Could Panther Fast it. Fails the Panther Faust. Got under fire here from the Panther Force. Stuart Pan is defending and Dart under heavy fire from the two Panther Force. Holding on to dear life there behind some slight cratering there. And there you go. Almost allowed here with the double Panther Force. Heavy bombardment there from the Panzer Kampagnes. Almost getting the guardsmen, but they do get away. The last man at least get away. T-34 rolling back while the T-34-76 like Kedneff advances. In the west here, Spare Panzer Quarters covering the retreat of the Stion Pioneers. 
And now he needs to get this force moving again pretty schnell. And also get his Panzer Force fixed up. At least this is a something I think he can deal with quite easily using the double Panzer Force. Might want to you know, focus down the guard with the double Panzer Force. Doesn't quite happen. T-56 moves in. Force is moving up. You come under fire from the T-56. Still Pioneers repairing. Instead of just pushing against the guard with the double Panzer Force, then getting fixed up, he sort of can't quite decide there. It seems we get a bit of indecisiveness going on with the pocket picks. He's not quite sort of fully focusing, and now he just sort of dobs his bag in. Flanked here by the T-34-76, which is halfway to Vincent T-2. But so is this Panzer IV. Other Panzer IV good to go. Fultz is pushed back from the east. And Panzer Kampf Angbeer being fixed up. Fultz, they need to just get the hell out of there. Fultz is advancing, and we got more Jaegers here. Going for the point here, but he's quickly just dispatched. So that ends up being a bit of a waste there. Overall, his Jaegers generally end up being that. And he's always not really made much use of the drops except for wasting munitions and assault grenades. He also being pushed back with the double panzers. The Kevin for a lot of their setup. We can probably clear out the Kevin by supporting by the Panzer Force. If he does this properly. But again, for some reason, he's pulling back his panzers instead of having them support. Okay, now he's pushing forwards. He seems to struggle here controlling his tanks, actually. Almost got a country support there, actually. And there we go. Wipe. Small victory there for Pork Picks and the German army. His Panzer IV, they're close to 82, moving ahead, they're T-54, careful, careful, careful. Both miss. Shot bounce, T-54, so he's getting to Vincent in two. Fox with Jaegers moving up westwards, they're going to need to get those tanks focused up and then push forwards. And again, keep a proper support by the infantry this time. And for that matter, keep the infantry proper supported by the tanks. And again, here really, I think, would reap quite dividends from getting an MD-34-2 here. Kenner, if they get to good in the T-34-6, Panther 4 from being hit, they might be able to get a wipe there and knock out the T-34. Almost got it. Betty 2 there for the Panther 4, increasing accuracy, which has got to be great versus all the infantry. Because that's really where the Panther 4, Betty 2, their bonus uh, comes really into play. In the east there we got Jaegers forces moving ahead here against the Stravniki, Vetchen T3. Surrounding them and pushing them back there, so big infantry push into the east-west side here. Steel Punch working with the Panther Force. Got a huge push there, needs to push ahead there as well, but needs to be careful about it. 100 points left here for Poker Picks, not good. Or Poker Picks, not Poker. But can I think open up? Coming under fire from the Panther Force out in the open. I'll tell you why he moved about like that. And go quickly wiping out the Kenneth for crew. 17 kills, they almost got the Kenneth, but it does get away. Quickly retreats from the east. Crushing walls, most of them moving about in the centre, needs to get the pentacles on it, but instead he's reverse moving towards here. Why not just trying to crap to the centre and push through that? Might be also hitting the retreat paths. Oh well. Which of course now means his western force is a lot more vulnerable to enemy armour. Fox is moving towards the centre. Under fire, force is supporting the Panzer Force. Hey, machine gun fire, these falls up in the second Panzer Force, that's good. 20 kills on the first one. Penal troops taking heavy loss, they go forced away. More infantry moving up, and meanwhile, the T 34s are fighting a bit. Huh. Sound like a T 34, it's just the guards from like machine gun, apparently. This used the same audio effects, interesting. At least that's what it sounded like briefly. Troops are reinforcing healing. Panzer Force down towards the centre. Basically using like a bit like a fire brigade to flag over there's a problem. You could go for an Osman now to at least help deal with the infantry. That might actually be a good idea at this point. Panzer Force under hit from the T-3045. Moves one away and then the other forwards. Not a touch doing here. Now he's going under fire from the should finally to pull back both Panzer Force. And he only does it with one. His tank handling seems a bit awkward to be honest. Might actually lose that Panzer IV. Needs to blitz, blitz, and it gets knocked out because again, I'm not entirely sure how Porker picks handles his tanks. Then, to be honest, I mean, why not just give them both at the same time in a reverse move order? For some reason, again, one gets to move forward, the other one backwards. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. That's 
just some weird ordering going on there for his tanks. And now his opponent's got an arm advantage. He's got a victory two, Panda four, half eight to victory three. And again, you know, where was the infantry? Trying to salvage, they were under fire, not really working out well. And for that matter, he's yet to upgrade his second steel pioneer squad, third steel pioneer squad with Panther Shrek's. You might have to go for the Yak Panther here just to have some uh, extra into tank versus all the armor. The units will then take lots of overall, they're just doing a lot of damage there. 24, 17, 19. Again, if it gets a good hit there. Panther 4 not being fixed up there pretty rapidly. Almost got a T-45 there, should get all the steel punnies on it. And again, get another Panther Shrek. 75 points are not looking good for the third Panther Dishon, which is now bringing up a Yak Panther to try and turn things around here. For Porcupix and the German army. Right click on it, Jeremy. There we go. Issue 5 being pushed back there. Well, at least the Yak Panzer is not quite so commonly used at the moment. I suppose it's not quite uh, fully on meta there, but you know, there's definitely room for some improvement there. Panzer 4 moving up, getting some good hits against the T 54 from 6 plus to bit 2 T 54. Will feed the Panzer 4 more experience, allowing it to more quickly hit bit 3, which will be quite beneficial for the Panzer 4 since that needs a higher rate of fire and higher mobility, which is generally something you'll want in your Panzers. The camera have to clear up by the engineers and the guard from Steel Pine is rolling forwards. Might want to allow it to shoot at infantry again. And focus down the guardsmen. Instead, he allows it just to shoot at the engineers instead of dealing with a more well, prioritized target, I would say. Yak Panzer arriving there with its high velocity 75 mm gun. Guys, they could be wiped out, could be wiped out. Should be shooting at them again. There doesn't seem to be any sort of ordering going on there. Got the engineers though, but you know, he could have gotten the guardsmen instead. And Sturm Pani just need to retreat before that place collapses. Yak Panzer engaging there, Sturm Pani getting hit the guardsmen out in the open. T-54 moves it, that's actually a bad move there by CPU Easy, almost loses it there, in fact, could end up losing it. And almost got the H-55 there as well, both of CPU Easy's armoured vehicles in a bad spot there. Almost got the H-55 there, one more hit, one more hit. And he gets the S-55, knocks it out there. But he's beginning to lose a lot of injuries, he's lost a steering pioneer squad. And I think he just lost another one. Porker Picks needs to be a lot more careful with how he handles his troops there. There's definitely some issues cropping up here as the game progresses. But he's got a veteran the 3 Panther 4, which could very well be what could allow him to turn this game around, similarly due to cheer mobility, but also rate of fire, which of course combined with the excellent Vetri 2 bonus of the uh, former command rest panther force and again it increases accuracy which is just increasing lethality a lot more which actually makes it all just in that way also better than the Wehrmacht panther four which you know spends it virtually to just getting up to you know half decent armor level so that rather gives the orbital command rest panther four a lot of edges there we'll have to see how that works out 50 points left, here again, now opens up. Which means he has to repair it again. Cool, again he sends it on his own, head on. Losing the victory point, he needs to double over to deal with that. Strong Pine is moving out to fix up the Panzer Kampfang in the west. We've got Jaegers pulsing here as the guardsman. As always, he seems to handle his tanks pretty awkwardly. Garton under fire for the Panther 4, need to stop up, need to stop up, increase accuracy. Getting a kill there. There you go, cutting them down, the machine guns also need to get a boost there from the accuracy bonus. d for then gate the Panther 4. Yak Panther nowhere need to be seen. Moving about, he needs to be careful again, no. Shot bounced, both shots bounced it seemed. 25 points left, not looking good here. Not engaging the T-35 there with this Panzer 4, even the other one here with the Yak Panzer. I'm not sure what the Porker Pix is thinking with that. The enemy is encroaching on our More territory. Jaegers arriving here, probably to harass the victory point, and then grab it back at least temporarily there for Porker Pix and the 35th Panzer Division. Moving up the Panzer 4 again, realizing he just has to get it in there. And he's to get some troops supported. Goes straight for the T-35, misses. 
pause again because it's got a high rate of fire, so there we go, not a problem. Knack Panzer rolling back. He's really rolling back quickly, just need to fix it up. Schnell. Is that the T 55 part going up to do with the Yak Jaegers there? Fox was rushing in the center. And he just sort of keeps standing about with his Yak Pants, not entirely sure where he wants it to be. There's the definitely a feeling there insecurity the from Porky Pigs, but he's not entirely sure where he wants it directed. Guards or Pimps are up there, getting shot at. Betty 4 for the Panther 4 increases its range and it's actually further, which just makes it even more lethal. In fact, a Betty 4 Panther 4 is a surprisingly sort of lethal uh, killer overall. Similarly, against its Vets and bonuses. Fox they're pushing back the heavy mortar there. Quick good work there again. The veteran storm pioneers should be able to quickly fix that. So that's something there for Porky Picks, but overall, victory points are bleeding up pretty quickly. He's going to have to launch everything here while he leaves something to defend the victory point. So almost everything should be launched at that victory point here. Just try and break through using, well, the decent execute the flank, maybe sort of going through here, or something attacked from the front. Got them engaged with the Panda 4. Half eight of it, 65. H5, oh, Yak Panther getting the T55, need to flank it. Getting buttoned up there, slowing him down, rushing for the point there. Almost got the T55 there. Need to get the Yak Panther in, need to get the Stion Pioneers in. Lost kids. Pionz was out now under heavy fire. Still holding the line though, Fulton's retreating. And the guard to flank the. Uh, Panther 4 should at least moved up closer to the penal troops instead of just allowing it to sit there back and then turned it around there to sort of present the front armor. Tank traffic by Kedden F is 9 points left. Oh dear. Almost lost his Panther 4 there, forced to blitz it away. That was not too strong next to there in the end by Pork Picks. And then he, I don't know how this handles his tanks. He really sort of jerks them about, it seems. And if anything, it seems I'm kind of getting the impression that one of the things Porker Picks should be working severely on is just managing his tanks because he really does some weird things with them. I mean, if he can just, you know, sort out a lot of the oddities with his armor handling, he could probably do a lot better than that. But in the end, he loses partly because, again, metagame wise, he's stuck too much to the upper commerce metagame. And the problem is with the metagame, and again, if you stick for it too long, someone else is going to figure out and counter. And the problem is, again, that's basically where the upper commerce is, is currently. Again, they've stuck so long to Fulskan, these Jaegers, and Oswins, they're kind of starting to get figured out, and they're not reacting to it. I mean, that's the problem with just sticking to the metagame. It means you can't react very well to shifts in it either. So, I mean, really, what Porker Picks needs to do again is, you know, deviate and more rack you know, he needs to remember what units do what in this case you know get out some machine guns to suppress the bastards in the early game then bring out armor consider orbital garden maybe a panther i mean really we just you know deviated from things more maybe going for another doctor entirely you know he probably could have won this but again just these you know stubbornness and sticking to it or perhaps you know just un unawareness of what else to do Factored in with again the jerky behavior with his tanks, then he just cost him the game. Though, if you I think overall, just play it what he knew, play it what works, and just you know, slow but surely ground him down. There also, I think some good maneuvers here and there, though. Though, I think he could have flanked overall more and laid down some more mines in the early game, but in the end, there you go. So, I hope you enjoyed this match. I hope you learned something from it. I hope it gives you different matches. If it did, want to subscribe, tell your friends, share it with everyone. If not, send any plan apart some feedback in the comment section. This is Imperial Lenting. Cheers. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you tomorrow for another exciting episode. Cheers.